okay there we go we should be live now let's wait for that to come up yay there we are <laughs> so hello everybody and welcome to love speaks love the second show of today and my beautiful guest is Alessandra Giglioli. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was a really bad accent. Actually, it's really good. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. It's lovely to have you back. You're looking amazing. I'm looking, I'm loving the blue. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna talk of lots of things, but before we get into that, um, let's just get into our heart space. And since we start, well, just a few seconds before we started, the energy just got really hot. Ah, so breathe. <laughs> okay, so we know this with a little heart to heart connect connecting all of our hearts together and connecting with the heart of Gaia the sun and source creator so let's get to that so let's just start by breathing together taking a few long and slow deep breaths breathing in love breathing out anything of the day so far all the week anything that might be stopping you from being in this now moment. And just taking that time out for you. So as we breathe love into our beautiful hearts and into every cell of our bodies, so just imagine that you're breathing love all the way down to the tips of your toes. Hmm. And feeling your body begin to relax, unwind. Just bring your awareness to your shoulders. Where are they sitting? Are they up by your ears or are they down and relaxed? And just visualizing that love going into every cell of your body, deep into the DNA. And extending our heart awareness out now to the heart of Gaia. Feeling our hearts, the connection between our hearts and the heart of Gaia. And as we do this, Gaia's love, Gaia's beautiful energy moves into our hearts. You might feel it going up through your feet and up through the base of your spine, into your pillar of light, all the way up to the top of your head and up to your soul star chakra above your head. And feeling Gaia's appreciation of all of us, a recognition of all of us, and that deep, deep love that she holds. And extending our heart awareness out to the heart of the sun. And feeling that solar energy moving into our bodies. You might feel it going into your solar plexus area or your heart. And that solar energy moving into every cell. So feeling love and gratitude in our hearts for Gaia, for the sun, and for source creator. And feeling, feeling the love from source creator moving into your body. You might feel it going into your crown and down your spinal column of light. 
And as we do this, I'm seeing that spinal column getting bigger, filling with golden light and rainbow colors. And seeing the energy from that column moving into all of your energy centers, front and back. Lighting them up, allowing them to release anything that's ready to be let go of. And feeling that heart connection between all of us present on the call now. or on the replay or on YouTube. Feeling us all connected heart to heart within that one unified field of love. And just handing over to you at this point, Alessandra. Thank you. We feel like, I feel the rainbow it was a spark, there was something that I was picking up on and I was seeing so many visions as you were sharing. And so there's something about rainbow and sparkle as though we're getting fireworks out of our hearts. And so there's a sparkle, sparkle, scintillating frequency that we're being invited to play with. And I work with this energy that I call platinum rainbow ray. And I work with it in, in the form of these plasma pillars that I can show. And it's a very <laughs> abstract energy that is, it's the ingredients that our soul is missing. And of course our soul is perfect, but as we get embodied, there's, there's ingredients and frequencies and realms and dimensions that we might be really, really missing. And we might be a bit homesick. So there's scintillating, sparkling, rainbow energy that's coming in to literally feed us, nourish us, rejuvenate us, revitalize our cells and just give us a little bit of extra sparkle and stamina. And that's what's coming in. And it comes in through the breath, through the heart, and it's just all around us, sparkling, 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 and expanding our auric field a little bit farther a little bit farther and a little bit farther. And we really begin to take up more space. We get to claim our space and we even get to ground deeper. And that's it. Awesome, thank you. And that's funny because as I was mentioning the energy center, I got the word fireworks and I thought, no, they're, they're not like, <laughs> it's funny, funny that you said that. And I don't know if it's lighting either. So um, yeah, interesting. I'm just sharing one more place. There we go. Ah, okay. That was lovely. And the energy was so hot at the beginning. It's kind of like, it's just calmed down a little bit. It's, you know, just to a more manageable level. But I was feeling that was probably, I was wondering if that was the Medusa energy coming in. <laughs> Hot and heavy. Like <laughs> a blast bomb. It's undeniable. I. I use the word light bomb, so. <laughs> um, very strong and determined, powerful energy is the Galactic Medusa. Ooh, I just have to let you know that I have my cat's butt right next to me here. She hasn't been feeling well, so I'll monitor, but I'm feeling blessed, just saying. And before, um, we have a Artemis temple. We are in the Artemis temple. This is a 2000 year old temple uh, and I live above it. So I can go hiking down the cliff and it's right there. It's sort of close to the public. So I go there illegally, <laughs> but there's a temple. So that's what I'm bringing to you. Oh, wow. Yeah, that feels intense. Mm, interesting. 
Okay, where to start? So, let's talk first about, because some of the stuff that we've talked about in previous shows is some of the stuff that's been going on with our bodies and health stuff, some of which overlaps a little bit for us. Um, and I've certainly been feeling some big shifts this, this year especially, but last year too, um, in the physical. Although I'll say in the energy of the physical, some of it isn't necessarily apparent in the physical, but in the energy of the physical, definitely yeah. huge shifts. Some of it is present in the physical too, in the, in the actual cells. Um, yeah, so you've been on quite a big healing journey for a number of years and you're looking amazing I have to say that oh thanks makeup <laughs> thank you so how's it all going and last time were you in it if, last time when we were on with Kristen you were in Italy but I think the first show you were still in the US how what? is it to be how is it to be back in Italy <sighs> Okay, so it's interesting. This is really interesting. Um, my eyes are greener. I have brown eyes. Maybe they were hazel. I don't even know. I always thought they were brown eyes. Now there's green in there. And I'm thinking, what is the biological, physical reason for that? And what's the energetic? And I'm really sure, okay, I went from living in Chicago for a few decades or a decade. Then I was living in San Diego, but still a very busy city, not in really good neighborhoods. But now I'm living in a forest reserve with a little and I'm in a little tiny village. So the people are not making much of a difference. Like it's all I'm in green. So I'm wondering if the land and I'm talking more to the fairies and linking with these elementals. So I'm wondering if the shift in my eyes, that they're green sometimes and looks like more like crystal. And so I'm thinking that there is some really good energy here. The, the thing, the difference between America and Italy is that America exterminated, you know, they exterminated genocide and, and not only the, our fellow brothers and sisters and humans, but also fairies and elementals. There's a whole, there was a whole dissemination, a clean swipe, right, of USA. So the energy is different. I know you're in the UK. Um, but the because I look at the layers and layers and layers of what forms consciousness in a place. So while Italy politically is one story, the land is speaking and supporting. I'm in a power spot, a volcano area, the sacred forest. I think they're mostly chestnut trees, but they used to be oak trees. They used to be the Druid area here. And that's also related to the temple. The Druid fairy goddess, the Druid fairy Diana, that then was called Artemis and then turned into a huntress. There's a whole myth here. So there's, I guess I'm dialed in. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So there's a big shift in being in Italy <laughs> versus being in America. I mean, there's massive good in, in both areas. It's just very different. And as far as health goes, before we got online, there was puffiness I was talking about, abdomen puffiness, but really there's puffiness all over the body still. We're still talking about that. And it just moves in different, it gets triggered in different ways. So that's an ongoing thing to be aware of. I just had a little tickle, something going on with my throat there. Yeah, I hear you on that. Um, and I would say that's that's <clears throat> similar for me. There's less inflammation, I would say, but it's still, it is still there. But there's different kinds of, there must be different kinds of inflammation and there must be different kinds of puffiness. Because when I think of puffiness, I'm thinking of lymphatic liquid going in between places where it shouldn't be. It's like out of control. And then my feeling for inflammation, because it could be different from different people, for me is, it's uh, inflammation of my nerves that then hit my head and I get the headache. So it's, it's fire in the wrong places. So there's different things. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. So I'm getting drawn to ask you something about Artemis and Diana. I feel there's, there's more, more to that. Um, so is, is that a being that you've, you've felt connected with 
while you've been there? What ha- yeah. what have been shared I, I, of your experience? I was called essentially I was called by the land to be here. Of course, it was a soul agreement. I literally was called. I had no intention of coming back to Italy. I left Italy when I was 18 and was in America for the rest of 20 plus years. Um, It was, I was just called. I have no idea how to explain it. I remember that I was suddenly, this sounds funny. I knew about goddess Diana somehow. She just really came on my radar and she's a fairy nymph that was her original original maybe 4000 years ago she was known as a fairy nymph and i just have to tell you how i get my intuitive hits i found one book written scholarly by cambridge published by cambridge it was an educated research about goddess diana by a woman author so it, I felt she had respect for the goddess. And to get the book, I had to buy it from Australia. I had to come to me in America at the time. And so this is how Diana was on my radar. And then, and then I find that my sister who was living in Thailand for a few years moved and out of, moved to Italy. And out of all the places of Italy, she was right in the woods where goddess diana started or how she popped out of a tree and so i had to go visit Susie. i visited her for a few months and then i couldn't leave so within a few months after that i organized to move so it was there was this goddess calling um to me it feels like every place on earth has a sacred site and in its purity and in its form Every area on earth has a sacred site. Well, we know of Mount Fuji and Mount Shasta, but a lot of places, this place is a sacred site. And I think all sacred sites have um, special recipes. So there's a recipe that's going on here with a microclimate uh, and um, a, a volcano energy, the crater, the lake in the volcano, and all these diversity of animals and plants that are here. But there's some strong frequency of this fairy goddess Diana that's been here. And I keep feeling of 4,000 BC, so that would be 6,000 years ago, that something epic happened here. Um, So there's a strong energy of this goddess being here, being local to this area. And I think that a long time ago, we're talking about like 4,000 BC, I think that's what humans were doing. I think they went to places that they felt and that they met their deities or gods, goddesses, the the spirits of big land areas and they felt that energy and they communicated with it. So I have a feeling, but I do know that, so I was going to say, I have a feeling that ancient humanity came here for ancient pilgrimage to meet her. And then I know later on the Romans and others imitated that too. So this is a pilgrimage area. And I'm saying there's many pilgrimages areas in other places, but there's something about a local deity which then you're linked, not just to the stars and nature, but to the land. So there's an anchor point here. Yeah, it's interesting you say that here. um, There is a being called Ellen of the Ways, and she is seen, um, I think her energy was brought over from Denmark. And she's seen with antlers. Um, she's strongly linked with with the reindeer who the female reindeer have antlers as well I have a goddess um, there with antlers <laughs> <laughs> and so she's strongly linked to this area and is often seen with a greyhound as well and one time when I was greyhound. a deer like I thought it was a dog at first when I saw the face and then when I saw the tail I realised that it was a deer running past me and then I don't know, 30 seconds later, a greyhound ran past as well. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, Yeah, so I hear you on on the connecting and she's very linked with the Fae too. But those those symbols that you're saying, that's connected. That's the same symbols. Goddess Diana is shown always with a deer and always with a dog and I think these are symbols of the goddess, but what you're saying, Ellen of the Ways, the goddess was shown with antlers in prehistoric time. So you're, 
And also just to say, I do think there is a connection with the Celtic, uh, ancient, ancient Celtic and Druid um, here too. So I, I feel people, humans walked a lot more, I mean, walked or traveled, I, I don't know how, and really went large spaces. But I do think that this goddess that you're saying in Ellen, Ellen of the Ways, and, and this Artemis Diana energy, I think they could even be the same or similar or similar expressions. I think it was people's pathway to the ultimate, I call it the primordial goddess or the creatrix. But it was so real. That's, that's, that's how they saw her, you know? Yeah. Sorry, you're going to say something else. I was just going to ask you, if, I mean, you were always connected with the Fae and with galactic fairies. Has your connection with the Earth fairies, has that got stronger since you've been there? Oh, I have some naughty stories to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about connecting with the fairies here. I, I don't know if it happened on purpose. There's male fairies. I, didn't, I just didn't think of male fairies. As a kid growing up, I was always trying beautiful fairies. And then there's the weird fairies that are gargoyle or gremlin or, or goblin and all of those gnomes. I guess those can be masculine, they're, they're mixed for me, but coming to Italy, I have had visions of fawns and centaurs, and depending on the name, uh, half man, half beast, in a way, if that's the right word, and they have to show their phalluses. <laughs> but it's funny, because it comes from a non-human way, and so it's just... And it goes to pre-Roman or overlap with Roman or more ancient times or Etruscans, which are very mysterious. So there's this masculine, playful, funny, even um, abundance energy or support energy, or very playful, but can be also serious. And I'm like, oh, there's a whole richness. So Italian's fairies are very much alive somehow. They've been kept alive. It has not been stripped away. And the mythology, the way the Romans and the Egyptians, no Egyptians, Etruscans displayed them are the way I see them. So I had these visions of them and then I would see it and I was like, oh, that's what I saw. So it made it more real. I mean, I saw, yeah, depictions of 2,000 or 3,000 year old images and that's what I was seeing. To give you an example, I was driving my car and I was anxious because I'm driving in Italy and I'm not used to people driving with no rules. Um, and, and the centaurs came and they were all jumping on my car and they were like, we're going to help. And they were like causing a ruckus, but they were helping. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And have you been, um, have you been painting them? Hmm. My relationship with painting is try it, then curse, and then be angry and try again and tear the paper up. <laughs> so the answer is no. Um, <laughs> I have to be so serious about what I do. So I've, I, that hasn't happened yet, but since you asked, it's giving me a good idea. I... <laughs> mm. So, okay, we've, we've, we've touched on, on Diana and Artemis and Ellen of the Ways. That's really interesting. And I, I can totally get that there would be an overlap there um, because I think her presence was pre-Druid. So it wouldn't surprise me if, at all if it carried on with Druid and, and went to Italy. Um, tell me about Galactic Medusa and how you started connecting with her and I'll, I'll just share first that I had the feeling it suddenly dropped in one day. I think I think I had a Medusa necklace, which I should have worn today. Um, and it suddenly dropped in that she'd been really misunderstood and really misaligned. Um, yeah. So on that note, tell me about your experiences with her. So it's all connected because you mentioned Ellen of the Ways and I'm like greyhound, deer antlers. Yep, I, I know that frequency. And then we've got Diana here and Diana's the dryad nymph that was very powerful. She brought the ancient Romans here and they had to claim the area because they had to claim the power, but they had to claim the, the merchant ways. So there's that. But then you've got Artemis, which is the version that we know from Greece. And, and Artemis is same, similar overlapping of Diana. But then in Greece, then you also have Medusa. Actually, I've been having Medusa downloads for quite a few years now, and it was such an odd frequency to understand. So angry, 
and just so strong, but not necessarily bad, just misunderstood. And um, so she's been slowly coming into my field. It's been a slow working with, um, and I've had, I guess you can call it initiations of being in a sacred temple space and having visions and talking with this frequency and saying, who are you to me? And so, of course, just like everything, there was probably several lives connected to that. So I know that I was a priestess of Medusa. And this is where I'm getting confused. Is Medusa the priestess and she is tuned into a goddess or is Medusa the name of a goddess? Mm -hmm. So because when I tune into priestesses, like if I tune into a priestess of Isis, then she looks and sounds like Isis. She's a priestess of Isis. So it's like priestess of Medusa. So Medusa energy. To me, she represents just like Ellen of the Ways and Artemis. She is a huge, what I would call anchor point or acupuncture point. So she's a massive anchor in our consciousness saying, hello, hello, something's going on, hello. And she hasn't gone, even though supposedly her head was chopped off. She hasn't gone. The, 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 the Greeks took her story, which I'm going to reveal in the course. Um, they took her story and then the Romans took the Greek story because the Romans took everything Greek and they made it their own. They slapped on a different name. I live in Rome. It's okay. I can say this. And, <laughs> but then the Romans put Medusa on their chest when they go out for battle, the legions, and then they put Medusa on their elbows to protect themselves and on their shins. And I have photos of that. I'm like, you go killing an energy and then you put it on you. What you doing? So she's like a gargoyle. She's a protector. She's massively fierce. So there's a lot to say about her. It can come down to power. <laughs> what do you do with power and story? So it was like unleashing Pandora's box, looking into this, these mythologies, because everything I thought and I learned growing up Artemis is this, and Diana is that, and Athena is this, and Medusa is that, and it's like, oh, but they're all one, <laughs> and they're all hiding bits and pieces. So just like you know a lot, and you tune into a lot, and you do your phenomenal channeling, and I do my other things, we are pieces, but we're also part of the whole, and so it's just really, are we a piece, and are we the whole? So there's just a lot of good stuff that's coming forward. <laughs> And have you noticed a difference in your own empowerment, in your own like inner power since you've been connecting with her? She's been kicking my ass. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> um, yeah, working with the plasma pillars in one way energetically kicks my butt to clean my house more and, and be more rich in what I do and how I do things. I thought I heard my cat. And Medusa is more about forward warrior woman, warrior of the light, not in bad ways, just in just speak your truth. Because I've been researching, right? The cat's walking down the stairs, which she's, means she's healthy enough. Um, I've been working on the Medusa material for 20 years because I was doing it when I was aware of this stuff in college. And so it's been seeping with me. So the Medusa energy literally is about speaking your voice. She was stopped and squelled in that version of the story, but she's still living on as a superpower and as a massive energy. So there's definitely a lot of speak up, speak up, don't be afraid. It's like, oh, it's big stuff, though. Interesting. And what can you tell me about the snakes? Because they almost seem like water to me. As long as you don't feel like a mermaid. Oh, you're very intuitive. I gotta write that down. Oh, uh, you just gave me another piece. <laughs> Oh, you gave me a piece. Um, I have to write that down because there's something about Africa going on there. Oh. Medusa, snakes, mermaid. Um, yeah. So there were the priestesses of the water and Mother Mary was said by some to be the priestess of the water because Marie 
mare, in Italian, the word for mare, for sea, is mare. And you have Mary, Mari, and um, there was a whole connection to specific Walter priestesses. There's a massive thing. Um, there's a whole lots of folklore in Africa, different countries in Africa that really have big, strong stories with um, mermaids. And so we're really used to seeing Caucasian Little Mermaid from Disney, and we really don't get to see other images. Um, but Little Mermaid's a soft and fluffy story, and, and the um, mermaids of Africa can be scary, just like the word for mermaid, sirena, in Italian, le sirene, sirens, which is actually a siren. The siren is scary. She, she calls to the sailors, and then they come on the rocks, and then the ship smashes and, and they die. That's one version. Um, but I think that's misunderstood energy, like the banshee is misunderstood energy also. I mean, you definitely have the bad, but there's also a lot of good in there. So back to Medusa and the snakes and the snakes that are like that, like water. Yes. But similar to Ellen of the Ways with the greyhound and the deer antlers, which are very, very. So the deer antlers or deer antlers and horns, um, because the horns then represent the fallopian tubes were repeated symbols for thousands of years before Christianity. So we have that. Snakes, obviously, not obviously, some people don't know it. Huge symbol all over the world, in Japan, in China, in Africa, and in different places. Snakes have always represented massive power. So let's talk about that. Also, we got to mention that the snakes could even have been dreadlocks, or I don't know if there's a, somebody told me there's a better way of saying dreadlocks, but I don't know it because you're dreading Maybe a lot. Kundalini as well, showing that the Kundalini is like all the way up to the. To yes, the that goes with the snake. So yeah. massive symbolism, layered, layered tons of symbols in one energy. But in that way, it can be loaded with a lot of good. Well, a lot of bad or a lot of um, distortion. Mm. But that's the whole point of what I'm talking about is distortion <laughs> and to understand it. Yeah. So when I was in Edinburgh in 2019, um, I was getting a necklace from a shop, a little um, pendant. And I thought it was a mermaid at first. And then I realized that it was Medusa because she had like a tail, but it was kind of more like. Oh, yeah, snake. she does have a snail. But was it a snake's nest? It was. Or I thought at first it was like a mermaid tail. But then when I looked more closely, I thought oh, it may actually be more of a snake tail. But there's water snakes. Mm. Yeah. And it was it was kind of like spirally. Um, and I definitely felt oh, there was something about me feeling more in my power when I was wearing the necklace. And I didn't realize that she was kind of linked to empowerment in that way. Um, but I could like I could feel that in a that in a roar. And not at anything, but just in a way of being fired up kind of thing, but not in an aggressive way, but just in a standing your ground kind of kind of way. Well, yeah, I think we're missing that. I feel like I feel like we're really missing all different kinds of archetypes because you can either be a sexy femme fatale or a saintly energy healer, Madonna thing. And I, I don't know if we have any other archetypes. I, re I really don't know. I mean, we might have three, but they're all the same. And if you're powerful, you're the evil witch. Um, and that's power. So yeah, the whole point of Medusa that I'm speaking about is creating, uh, is beginning to, is for us to begin to create more archetypes. And maybe I'm putting a whole bunch all in one, but it's a bit of a way to start and then you can separate them out. Yeah. Next thing I'm drawn to ask you about is you mentioned Mother Mary and Mother Mary has been coming in for me a lot recently. And I watched a, a good few months ago, I watched um, a chat with Regina Meredith and Marguerite Rigolioso. Rigolioso. I love Marguerite Rigolioso. I wondered if you were connected with her. So she was talking about Mother Mary and I realized that I shared 
you know, I had much more of a strong connection with Mary Magdalene. And I would do gatherings with, with Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene and Isis, but it's like the other two were at the front and I'd like push Mother Mary at the back a little bit because I, I wasn't as associated with, with the distorted image of her being this yes. pure no. nun. Well, yeah. she had all the codes. She had all the sexual codes. And a lot of Marguerite's work that I'm just starting to get into is about Mother Mary's Immaculate Conception and the process that she went through in that and her teaching, her learning from being a child of those, those skills, those arts, and that she taught Mary Magdalene. Um, so that, that was a huge awakening. And I've been having spontaneous womb activation since connecting with her and especially in the garden especially when I'm out in nature um, but I recently did a course that Marguerite and Z from Earthstar Academy did that was a womb activation it was a couple of weekends ago um, so I'm, I'm just drawn to ask you about the womb energy and if you've been feeling any of that going on since your connection with uh, Medusa because I'm feeling there's something there. In that. Well, you're giving me lots of info. I gotta write notes. First, I gotta say, I have the book on the shelf and I love it by Marguerite Rigolioso. And I think it's called The Virgin Mother Goddesses. And she talks all about par parthenogenesis and, yeah. and good body of work. She's done a lot of scholarly research. So that's really good. Um, womb, I gotta write that down. Womb activation. I am actually deep in process of that. Um, and I can just say I'm experiencing it now. And each time, so I am teaching the Galactic Medusa course and it starts next week. And each time I'm getting readier and readier for it, I get different stages and different initiations. A lot of them were about fear. Ooh. In fact, when I was preparing the course, I would boom, 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 do great work, channeling it, putting it together. And then for a few days in a row, and then I needed two days of complete rest because it was a powerhouse. So you're helping me understand that I think I'm going through a womb activation in these few days. Uh, <laughs> and so then I need to look deeper into what, yeah, inter to interact more with it. Marguerite released another book. I haven't read that one, but I, I haven't, I've read the first few pages, but there's a womb, a book more about the, the womb, I think, specifically the What's womb. What's the title? I can't remember and it's in the summer house, but I will um, I will let you know that. I might be able to find that while you speak of something. Um, okay. But yeah, it, it's to do with parthenogenesis, but it's more specifically the womb rather than the, the beings that have, have done it. Um, I, will, I will check that. Um, yeah, so tell me, Tell me about, tell me more about the course that's coming up. Okay, I, as you mentioned the womb, I kept seeing my womb and I kept seeing a cave and caves and how women shamans throughout time were using caves for many reasons, but one of the biggest reason is to be in the womb of Mother Earth. And that's explained and shown in slideshows in, in the course. So I, it's my first time creating a course. It took 20 years to do. I think it's 24 years. I'm doing it. It starts next Saturday and we go on for five weeks and we meet, me, we meet every Saturday. And I have to say that if it's a great, fantastic course, it's because I was guided. So I don't feel like I took much part in it. It all came fully formed and I was like, this is a great idea. And so it came out as the energy is the galactic Medusa. She's the mascot, mascot, the MC. She's throwing herself under the bus to show you stories. And, and gosh, there's so much that we do in the course. And a lot of it is what is our narrative? What have we been telling ourselves? Why have we been telling ourselves who we are, how we are identity? Oh, because of society that we're living in. Well, what society are we living in? Oh, it's screens. Screens are on. We're digesting media all the time. 
Well, there's a thing called media literacy, and that means, at least in sociology, there's media literacy. Are we literate enough? Has anybody taught us how to digest the screens and images and fake archetypes or very strained archetypes that we're being fed all the time? And so I guess we're trying to do a lot in this course, but it's going to be interesting. So all of this has come together in the new heroine's journey. I don't even know if anybody's really talking about the heroine's journey. We have Joseph Campbell that did a great job and Star Wars and other things that are really showing us the hero's journey. And a lot of us can identify with that. It's really good. It's really good. It's really helpful. But we're evolving and we're bringing back ancientness. And so we need other bits and pieces. So the heroine's journey is much wackier than the heroes. The hero, you know, goes and he's a warrior and he, I don't know if he makes friends with the monster. I don't know if he slays the monster, goes back, he knows things. I'm really not very good at speaking about the hero's journey because I've been so deep in the heroine's journey. But with the heroine's journey, first of all, I have to say that there's a woman that did a phenomenal job. Her name is Maureen Burdock. She wrote a book. She did years, decades of study, and she put together 15 steps for the heroine's journey. And she came from Carl Jung background. So she really did some heavy, good work. Um, and I digested that in a bunch. I read so many books and things. And so in the download that I got, which was five steps, there was some twists and turns. There was some surprise twists. And one of them was losing our identity. And the womb is in there somewhere also with the, these stories. And I have to say this, going batshit crazy is one step of the heroine's journey. <laughs> and of course, when I mean the heroine and the divine feminine, it's in all of us. We are, we have male and female. So it's not even, it doesn't have to be women centered, but women who embodied the feminine throughout society it's with the well, mostly women that were burnt at the stake so just saying that but it's for anybody that resonates so yeah so we're going through five steps that i'm putting together for the heroine's journey and they're heavy and intense and awesome and liberating and whoa <laughs> like oh that's a surprise but i think it connects a lot of dots what i want out of this is I want an energy shifting inside of us. I want um, or intend that everybody makes this what what's important for you or for me, because I'm not here to tell you a new story. I'm here to break up things, bring elements and say, oh, do you like a little bit of this? And do you like a little bit of Artemis or you don't like Artemis? But what about Athena? Athena's cool. You know, or you don't like Athena, but you like mermaids in Africa. Well, let's go with that one. So it's like peace. It's like piecing something to the other. It's like create your own story. You know, the one where you don't know how it ends because you, you make the choices or choose your own adventure. I think that's the one. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Interesting. Now the book name, I've written it in the comments, is The Mysterious Tradition of Miraculous Conception, Mary and the Lineage of Virgin Births. Okay. Um, yeah, I read the first first few pages, but I've not read I've not read more yet. I've bought so many books recently, um, and I'm not really reading any of them, but I will. There was another womb activation book that I bought as well. That's a big one. Um, so, what are you doing? What's happening this Saturday? You've you've got a free event before before the course starts. Okay, so this Saturday is. I'm bringing in the energy of the divine masculine plasma pegasus that just came out of nowhere and it was like that's great male energy it was very protective overarching soul overarching energy so we'll talk about the divine masculine um and then we'll just dip in and experience what the plasma pegasus has for us um hoping that the sound works because i do have drum and crystal bowls so there's that. And somehow the divine masculine is bringing us in. It's like the good divine masculine saying, we're sorry about patriarchy. We're sorry. <laughs> and then opens the door for galactic Medusa. And I have a slideshow to be like, check this out. Check that out. What? And then, then we'll get a little riled up saying, that's awful. Um, really, things are like that. Because when you see them in a way, sort of when you see things out of context, you see them in a whole new light. 
And so I'll be talking a bit about media literacy and showing some slides and we'll have some reactions. And then we'll wrap it up with what the new evolved, expanded Medusa Priestess, the Galactic Medusa Priestess has to offer us as a container. So there's some, some Shum, <laughs> galactic shamanic work. <laughs> I was the shamanic work that I was bringing in. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm very excited for it and for the course, I have to say. Now, something else that I don't think I've asked you about um, on the show, because I think this came, we didn't mention it when you were on with Christian, and I don't think it had come up before. These beautiful, beautiful four pillars. So, oh, I still am figuring out what this is, but um, um, these little babies. So I brought in four of them. Yeah, this is. Gosh, it looks so good. Um, this is melted quartz in a lovely Reiki form. Re Reiki. I'm going to say Reiki, Reiki energy form, uh, hexagon, very important for stability of the cells and moving frequencies. It's very important for that. These are, okay, I wish I could show you on camera, but I have four of these codes and I put them together in square formation. And I'm realizing now that this is holding together a temple. We're living in times where we're so individual. I mean, I'm sure you and me were priestesses of the same temple in some fairy world, and we had each other and other people. Somebody was washing the floor, somebody else was peeling potatoes, and then we got to meditate together and, and save the world or create different things. But now we're all on our own in a certain way um, as individuals. I don't have a massive crystal temple that I can walk in and rejuvenate my all body parts and get and have energy. So I think that I got this together. I want to show all of them, but they're all all four. And I think it's creating a template for a physical crystal temple to be around. Then for me, what crystal temples were in the good times of Atlantis, because I tap into good times of Atlantis, is you get a powerhouse generator. So it's an abstract concept to help really bring in energy. And to talk about energy, I was in a wheelchair for several years, in and out, in and out. I had no energy. I was dealing with extreme fatigue and I thought I was slowly dying, which maybe I was. So I guess I came up with different ways of bringing energy in. But then each one of these has a code. And for me, it has codes of connecting with the earth and literally the earth dragon and connecting into our body through cells. Yeah, the dragon and the cells. And this all, whoops. <laughs> um, and I actually brought these in because I was teaching in Japan. And, and in Japan, where there was like 30 of us all focusing on one of these codes for one whole day. And we got to meet these overarching frequencies. So for the cells, we got to meet the queen mitochondria, this massive overlighting goddess that's helping us work with bringing energy into the mitochondria because the mitochondria is like a, a rogue organelle inside our system that wasn't originally there for original humans in a way where did the mitochondria come from and so the mitochondria seems to be alien or something so bringing in and it brings in energy or it, it trans creates energy to me out of thin air that's how i understood it but maybe biologists know but i don't know if they know and so these are massive symbols within symbols to help energize us and our healing and to connect deeper into our ecosystem with the earth dragon because i think we're so unplugged we need little tricks and tools and things to just bring our mind our logical patriarchal mind to just sink in i don't think we can all live in a log cabin in the woods and even then we still need to be retrained of how to <laughs> how to be deeper in with nature so Hard to explain what these little cuties do. <laughs> I am just going to check. I love what you say about them and it's made me realize that I need to uh, connect with them more. I'm just going to check that we're still live because my computer's frozen. Um, well, my computer says we're live. Yeah, we are. We are. 
I'm not quite sure how I'm going to end the call or stop the live stream, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> um, and that, did we show that one yet? Oh, yeah, that's my favorite because it connects to a specific stargate frequency, Aldebaran, which is the brightest star in the Taurus constellation. And it just goes above and beyond and it brings in clean, clear, newer energy, very ancient, but also very new futuristic stuff of what a lot of us are here from the future we're saying come on humans let's do it you know we've done it but come on let's do it and you designed these didn't you yes i designed them and they've got I all these layers of colors <laughs> i love them yeah they are um so i have these four pillars on my fairy otter in my other room. Fairy. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just wondering what more to, to do with them. They well, I, mm, uh, I feel they're, they're, for me, they're interesting because for me, they're there as an engine and I'm interacting with them this way. They're, they're there to hold in energy. But I think that with crystals, we all play with crystals in different ways. So what do you yeah. feel like? What do you feel like doing with them? Taking them out in the garden? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure I've taken them out in the garden before. Um, and I'm wondering if these vibrational essences that I'm doing, how this first one would feel about being within the gateway for a night or two as well. Is it okay to ask what is your vibrational essence? Because I'm like, it it's, could be so many things. It's rejuvenation and regeneration, which just seems like yeah, rather perfect. How would you but, feel about that? Would that be comfortable to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like experiment away. But hold mm -hmm. on. I think what I'm asking is, are you doing pure frequency? Or are you playing with essential oils and fragrances? Um, sorry, did I just deafen everybody? <laughs> just, <laughs> my but, uh, just if anyone's fallen asleep, sorry, I just woke you up. Um, so I'm making the mother essences at the moment, and the mother essence doesn't have any oils in, but the mother essence will be broken down into two, I think. Um, certainly the next one, which I think will be like a or a cleansing kind of space clearing one. So the space clearing one will definitely have a spray with oils. I'm not sure at this stage if this first one will, the rejuvenating one. So it's going to be more drops that we take orally. Oh, I like that. But I'm also going to, I'm also going to play with it like in moisturizers and stuff. And because I've got like a, an endless supply of it, I'm just going to be <laughs> playing in all sorts of ways with this. Oh, I like that. Mm. I like the idea of, of putting something on, embodying it. Oh. Yeah, because I'm, for some reason, I maybe because I like it, I like the, um, I like playing, is it water based? The aura sprays. Because yeah. it's, it's not perfume, you can do so much of it. <laughs> Yeah, this is my first vibrational essence that I've made. And um, oh, you've made it already. It's more or less. It's um it's in a crystal grid at the moment. And some of the codes that I've that I've been doing, it's got codes around it in four places. It's got two on top of the bottle. The essence has been in my rose grid in the garden for a long time. There are certain healing, rejuvenating plants that I've got there. So it's spent time. With all of them there's a little ginkgo tree which is like the one of the oldest trees on the not this one it's quite a young tree but the ginkgo tree itself is one of the oldest trees on the planet um known for its oh. healing pockets. so it's it's hung out there it's hung out with cedar trees it's hung out with the pine with all my different rose bushes are you going to write it down that, that sounds a great ingredient so you're going to write all those down right yeah okay yeah, and all the steps that I've done as well. So yeah. I've sung to it, I've done light language with it, I've used my crystal bowl with it. Um, mm. what else have I done? I'm sure there's more than that. Um, but the, the rose grid in the garden is a particularly potent 
little energy spot. So it's spent. I've been working on the energy for six weeks now because it was full two full moons ago that I started working with it. It's been in the sun, it's been in the moon energies, it's been like <laughs> anything that I can think of to do, I've been doing. Yeah. Talk about crystal temples. I just had a flash of you doing this. Either, either it was in the past or you're doing it now in a parallel way. To me, it's all the same. But I, I just had a flash of you doing it. But I just saw a massive temple that you were in hmm. doing this. And I saw you very happy. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to France to the perfumiers, and I had this feeling, I think there was a Johnny Depp film where he was a perfumier, where he was like, you know, getting little drops of things and just putting little drops, you know, you just put a few in and, and see how it, it changes the flavor and the essence mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And I got such a strong feeling that I've done that before. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. So it's fun. It's really fun making, making these essences. And something I was gonna say with the with the pillars. So you've you've got people all over the world that have, got these pillars when you were talking about the crystal temple i saw this huge massive crystal temple comprising of all the pillars that are in all those different places it it's like the sum of all the parts creates this massive oh. crystal temple does that does that resonate for you yeah it resonates because I keep understanding that each one of us that has the physical ones, um, we're contributing to a grid around the earth and it's plasma crystal grid. It's something about the words are bringing codes. So I'm aware of a grid, but it would make total sense that they're, yeah, that they're always showing, because when I meditate with them, I see them as giant pillars around me. And when I go to different sacred places, Sometimes they duplicate and there's 20 of them or 22 sacred numbers around a sacred place to show me it's sacred and then to give it more energy. But for them to have their own temple makes a lot of sense. I mean, I keep seeing them as a temple, but it's like a movable one. But you're just giving me a download of there is the ultimate <laughs> place. I'm like, oh, I like that. Like the mothership, um, the mothership temple. And uh, well, that feels really good. Mm. I, I'm going to have to do my homework and tap into that. Because mm. it feels very other dimensional. I just got a blast and it, it feels outside of Earth and uh, very plasma crystalline. And I want to use the word sentient, just, just benevolent energy. Ooh, I got to write that note down. Thanks for all the info on this. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved the way we've been weaving together. And I loved what you said about them making their own story up in the in the heroine's journey as well. That's really interesting. And it does feel like we're rewriting a lot of the scripts, a lot of the scripts that have been before. Yeah, Medusa is all about writing another script because you listen to the story. It's like Medusa was a priestess. She went into Athena's temple. She got raped by God, so-and-so, I don't remember his name, one of 50 million friends of Zeus, because they were always raping other goddesses. Then Medusa gets punished because she's the one that got raped. And so Athena, no, Athena sends somebody to go kill her, and somebody goes and beheads Medusa. So what do you get out of that story? It's like, um, and these are the ancient myths, like what kind of doodle hashes that you know it's like, oh. and i learned um i don't remember how many books i read and how many places i get bits and pieces but it was oh shoot i wish i remember it might be i might get the name murray shoot there's a woman who wrote a book and i think it was called gods of the witches god of the witches i'm pretty sure it was from her book where she said it very well and she said if there's ever a, a mythological story where someone's getting raped which is usually a woman or a goddess it's because it's the conquerors come and they come into the area so if if zeus comes into athena because 
Af Athens, Athens was named after Athena, and he says, I'm going to rape Athena. No, he made her his daughter, subjugated her that way. So if there's that power over, you're basically having one story is getting swallowed up by another story, and instead of completely obliterating Medusa or Athena, they get swallowed up. Athena was not the daughter of Zeus, and Zeus did not birth her out of his thigh. <laughs> it's like, come on, but he was there. And then Zeus is raping all of the goddesses because all of those goddesses were the goddess in that local area. So, yeah. See, but that's what I'm getting out of it. Somebody else, just to give an example, there's an author, another one who followed Carl Jung, and her, and her name is Jean Shinoda Bolin, and she was maybe popular in the 50s or 60s, or maybe 60s. Um, and she wrote a book, The Archetype or the Goddess in Every Woman. And she was looking at the goddess Persephone, Athena, and other ones as archetypes. And even though for me, it's a very hijacked, mismatched goddesses stories to look at, I think she did some really great material out of it. So what I'm saying is we can all look at these stories and we, we're gonna get different narratives from them. Hmm. And something that seems to be being corrected at the moment is the stuff between women, the competition between women, the um, you know the st the stabbing in the in the back kind of energy between women that seems to be being shifted at the moment. That we're moving into a very different space of support and kindred sistership at the moment. Go on. So I just have a book, it's right there. I wish you could see my room. It's a book <laughs> called Bad Women and it's in Italian translated from a, a Spanish speaking author. And she did such a great job, it's a new book. And she was showing us how in fairy tales, the women are always stabbing each other in the back. It was women against women. And it's, it's just been sort of pushed upon when it's not accurate mm. or it's become maybe that way. But yeah, I think we have, so many wonderful material and people talking about this. So I think you're right. I think, well, there's massive movements and changes to what, well, there's many ways that women are coming together more, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it, and I'm not really picking up on that energy. I'm sure it's still around, but I'm not really picking up on that. So you're saying you're not experiencing women wanting to compete with you or stab you in the back. You're not having that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but, uh, I have some friends that still do experience that. Um, but for some people, it might actually be a um, soul mission thing, mm. you know? But, um, I'm no, sure it's still happening, but. Yeah, yeah. But I, well, I, I'm sure you do. That's what you're saying. There's more win-win, the win-win situations where it's win-win-win for everyone. And that's the opposite of what, you know, yeah. Mm. Now, I wrote solar plexus down before. Why did I write solar plexus down? I think there's been a lot going on for me yeah, I think it's taking us back to the empowerment thing. There's been a lot going on, I'd say for about three years, solar plexus wise, actually no longer, five years. Um, so when I was in Australia, I spent probably more time sacral than solar plexus. But since I came back to England, solar plexus has been a real theme and I did, um, I just, this, this was, I've not shared this with many people, but there was some work that I was doing in the garden and it was linked to solar plexus and lungs. And I think we've talked about this before that you've got this massive nerve bundle in your, in your solar plexus that I think is the biggest nerve bundle in the body. Could be wrong on that, but it's a huge solar plexus nerve bundle. Um, and I felt, in there without knowing about this nerve bundle, that there was some energy in my solar plexus that would trigger my lungs to close up a little bit. So it would trigger like a bit of an asthma response to me. So if ever I was wheezy, instead of going to my lungs, which is where you would assume that I would go to, I would always go to here. 
and it would feel like the wheeze had come from here rather than my lungs. Even to the point that if my stomach was too full, it felt like it would press on that nerve bundle and trigger a bit of an asthma response. Um, so then I learned that there was this big nerve bundle there. So it kind of all made sense. Um, but the work that I was doing this day on the garden, in the garden, not on the garden, um, I felt like there was this cylinder in there that was quite big. It was probably about that big. And it was full of stuff. And what I was told was that it was part of my old architecture that was being upgraded. So I didn't need that anymore. So I took that out. And then there was a second one that was up higher. So from, I think the two overlapped. Um, so the second one went up to maybe about there to, to kind of, I'd say just above the high heart. And I was guided to take those out and, and I was asked to, to put them in the ground. And I'm always a bit wary of that. It's like, surely, surely Mother Earth has enough to do, but it was like, no, really, <laughs> this is fine for you to put it in the ground. And since I've done that, there's a real difference in that area. Um, so yeah, I don't know about why I'm sharing this, but it was, it was something to do with the old architecture that had been upgraded. Does that, does that lead into anything for you? Well, I remember that when you mentioned solar plexus, we were touching base as to how we're feeding the energies now. And now is connected to the whole past five years that you're mentioning. And I, I was mentioning the inflammation in the intestines and stomach area and you're mentioning the stomach area. So, um, and then the really, oof, releasing lots of things lately. Oh, it's really yucky, really. Yeah, things that are lodged in, in the digestives, in, in all the organs, in, in, the, in the organs within the abdomen. Um, so I resonate with what you're saying because it's kind of like touching base where, where, where are our bodies at right now? What are we processing and doing? And I'm sad to say I've got really, really tummy aches and bloating, and it's just, it feels so energetic and shifting. Um, but it heartens me to hear that you're releasing big things because I feel like I am too, and our bodies are such processors. And I think I'm trying to get less annoyed with the body and understand that the body has so much wisdom maybe the body is a different kind of priestess that has much more to communicate to me and say that she's been so busy doing all these things but at the same time i'm almost like can i just have perfect health and just be very happy on earth please <laughs> um and get out of martyr mentality or, or or, or processing all the time. But in some weird way, I think you are and I am getting, I think there's a progression. I think that's a whole other journey, hero's journey or hero's journey, priestess journey, um, massive hero journey, uh, what's the word? But so I think there is a moving forward, uh, a massive progress. But these are also, you mentioned five years and then you mentioned, did you mention three years? But God, these have been, have been insane times. These have been insane times. Can you imagine what we'll be saying or our guides will be saying, you know, when we look back into these times and you're like, and you were complaining about bloated stomach. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> and swelling up. It was horrible. <laughs> so I think we're achieving incredible things and our, our bodies are... I don't know. I think our bodies are coming back online to be appreciated. And oh, well, that's part of the heroine's journey, isn't it? To appreciate the body. Okay, I have to do part two to the course. <laughs> Another few steps. <laughs> the body, which of course she comes into the story, but oh, uh, oh yeah, that makes me think of how much power the woman bodies, the woman's body, has because of more complexity or different kinds of complexity. Hmm. You were saying solar plexus. 
I'm going back to the womb. Would you, is the womb in the solar plexus? No, it's below it. I think it's below. Because and so I, I, I feel Marguerite says there's a, a different womb chakra. Um, and to me, it's deeper. It's oh, kind hmm. of, yeah, it, it's like it's in further. It's, it's like deeper. This is what I feel about a lot of these in between energy centers that feel like they're coming online. It's like they're, the energy centers that we've been working with are nearer to the surface. Yeah. And these new ones coming online are, are deeper that are kind that of makes sense. coming up. Okay. Yeah. When you said that you had these big, I think you said cylinders, and then you're saying Mother Earth, I do it all the time and other people get scandalized, but I'm like, well, I've got a good relationship with Mother Earth. Yeah. Like, I think that if my feeling is, if you are conscious and you're giving to Mother Earth and you have a portal you're communicating with or you have a communication system, I think it's recycling. She takes the energy and says, oh, this is gross, and, but, it, but it's, it's energy still and it gets literally recycled, which is what I think nature does. The rotting leaves fall down and then they fertilize the soil there. That's how I see it. Yeah. Um, but if you're whipping around, <laughs> you know, it, it might land on someone. But um, no, I, I think, yeah. And then you were in the garden, so that just all felt really sacred. Mm. And I was, I was astonished at the almost instant relief oh. that it gave me. I think that's the key. We can talk about bloatedness and pain and all these other things and the swelling, but I think there's immediate relief, like you're saying. I really think there is. And I think if now, of all times, now it's more accessible and now everything is so accelerated, which can be scary and dangerous, but can be amazing in this space. Yeah. Is there anything else that is coming? to you to share I was looking at the time on my frozen clock and I realized that it's later than <laughs> do you know it's 8 45 here for me um no um the only thing I was feeling was rose energy you're I'm seeing a massive rose around you and of course with your beautiful background but there's this it's like a gift I think it's a gift that you have for yourself that you're bringing forward for us. I'm just seeing a massive rose. <laughs> and I'm seeing it as really soft pink, a light, light, light pink. Do you know, have I spoken to you about this before, but when I do my light language activations, it creates roses. When I do them outside, it creates crystalline roses. Oh. Mm. You're, you're uh, really... Um... I don't know what you're doing it's um you're it's like initiating yourself into deeper deeper cooler higher rings in the ladder of some priestess feeling i have for you i just from the last time we talked it just feels very technically magically yeah i see it feel the technical part and i feel the fairy rose part yeah so I feel like you have something for us to wrap it up. It's it's a big, big pink rose. Interesting. Okay. Do you think that's in light language? I guess so, because it's like coming out. Thank you for yeah. that. Okay, so let's let's feel into the energy of the rose. And just imagine that you're smelling that beautiful fragrance of the rose or rose oil. Even perhaps some of the rose oil that I've been creating from the roses in my garden, which smells amazing. In fact, I have some here. Maybe not that one. So I'm just going to put some of this rose oil in my hands so the energy is with us.
So just imagine, just visualize that you are being held within a rose. Hmm. Or many roses. So a huge rose that you're inside and within each of your major energy centers is another rose. They might be pink, they might be different colors. And down in the ground is another big rose that you're standing on. And above your head is another big rose that is pointing down towards you and surrounding you are many, many roses. So let us just breathe this energy into our bodies, breathing it into any areas of your body that you may be feeling are out of balance or painful. And just ask these rose energies to go into those areas of your body, into the organs, so perhaps into our stomachs, into that nerve plexus, into all of the organs of digestion. And I'm seeing us being offered a rose. I'm seeing a chalice and I'm guided that the, the fluid within the chalice is rose liquid. It's rose essence in liquid form. So I invite us all to take some sips of this rose essence liquid. So we're taking this essence internally. And I'm also seeing a beautiful garland of roses around all of our heads like a crown. And feel free to play with this visualization and just bringing as many of these roses that are linked to the rose lines, the heart lines of the earth. Bring them into your body, into your ears, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, to every teeth, every tooth, into your shoulders, your elbows, your fingers your thumbs, one in the palms of each hand, same in your feet, so in every joint of the body. One for each lung, one for your heart. One in the womb space, the energetic womb space that everybody has, no matter what gender. And just feeling that beautiful rose essence. And taking a few long and slow deep breaths. And if your eyes are closed, just opening them whenever you're ready, bringing your awareness to your heart space, fully anchored and aligned, fully connected and grounded to earth. Hmm. Thank you for that suggestion. <laughs> I was going to say, are, have you done, sorry if I'm asking this because I, I don't know all of your work, have you done womb activation? Because you just did it on us now, but... It's been dropping in as something that I'm going to be doing. Yeah, because it's great. Like it feels, yeah, it feels fantastic for you to be doing it. And I want to say, are you going to do it? But you're already doing it because I could see... 
I didn't see all many things. <laughs> I was seeing posters, <laughs> guided meditations, audios, <laughs> the essences. <laughs> and, you know, you're dialed in and into your unique, very one of a kind way with your pathway, with, with the rose, the priestesses, uh, lineage, and how you're embodying it. And then this activation. I think you mentioned it in the womb, and I had a white rose. So up until now, I was playing, or they were coming to me, these soft, soft, is it antique pink, from artist to artist, antique pink uh, roses were around and very, very velvety and very fragment. And for some reason, when the roses came around the, the crown of the head, they were blood red. I was like, okay. You know, it was very exciting. But then when the womb one came, it was white. And it was a different kind of rose because there's so many different kinds of roses and it blossomed, blossomed, blossomed. Then it filled everything up. I was like, oh, I don't know if I've ever had that before. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I was like, that was a womb activation. So you're doing incredible things. And I, yeah, I can just see you making the graphics for it all. I think you've already done other graphics, but well. Wow. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's really exciting. And so interesting that you picked up on that because I haven't really shared that with many, many. It's only oh. been dropping in in the last couple of weeks. Oh, it's po powerful and fully formed. And, you know, you've done it before. So you're, you're an authority on it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, thank you. I'm really, um, thank you. Thank you. I loved I loved that call. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presence. As always, I always love chatting to you. We should, uh, should chat more often. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, you on Saturday. I'm looking forward to that. Yes, I'm looking forward thank to you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone that's been with us, either on the live or on the replay or on YouTube. And I am going to see if there's a way. Oh, I can stop the live stream on the iPad. <laughs> I thought if you shut it all off. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So I'm going oh. to stop the live stream. Thank you, everybody that's been with us. Ciao. And Thank you. See you soon. Ciao. Thanks. <laughs>